The Walking Dead is one of my favorite video games of all time. I love the characters and the story, and no matter how many times I replay it, I never get sick of it. I was really excited to play Season 2, and at first I really enjoyed that game as well. However, during the wait between episodes, I was discussing the game with others who had played it, and as I observed their conversations before eventually joining in, I started to notice how flawed it was. New episodes would come out, and initially I would enjoy them, but then I would discuss the game with others afterwards and realize that the episode wasn't actually as good as I thought it was. So, since The Walking Dead Season 3 is on its way very soon, I decided that I'm going to look back at Season 2 and talk about how fucked up it is. But because of how many problems this game has, I feel like I can't just make one video on it, so I'm going to make one video for each individual episode. I also do one more video after I'm done talking about all the episodes to talk about the game in general. Of course, this game is all about the story, so in order to discuss it, I need to spoil it. Not just for this season, but for the first season too, so if you're thinking about playing this series at all, if you haven't already, stop watching this video now. If you have played both seasons already, or you don't care about spoilers however, then please feel free to continue watching. This is gonna suck. The game starts by giving us a recap of events that took place in Season 1. Lee Everett's a convicted murderer, is on his way to prison when a zombie outbreak happens and Lee takes it upon himself to look after a little girl he comes across named Clementine. As time goes on, they eventually make their way to Savannah where Clementine is kidnapped, Lee gets bitten by a zombie, but manages to rescue Clementine before he dies. And Clementine has to either kill him so he doesn't become a zombie, or leave him to die. Clementine is all alone when she sees two figures in the distance, and now we jump several months ahead. It turns out the people Clementine saw was Krista and Omid, two people Clem and Lee met along the way in Season 1, and now enough time has passed that Krista's pregnancy is quite visible and she and Omid are discussing what to name their kid. The group comes across an abandoned rest stop where Krista decides to give her and Omid some alone time, and Omid tells Clementine to wash up in the bathroom next door. She does just that, but accidentally drops her bottle of water, and someone enters the restroom when she goes to retrieve it. The person who enters is a teenage girl who takes Clementine's gun, which she left on the sink, and holds up Clementine. During the holdup, Omid tries to step in, but gets shot instead when the sound of the bathroom door closing startles the girl. Krista immediately rushes in and shoots the girl without hesitation after seeing what happened. Krista also notices that it was Clementine's gun that was used to shoot Omid. After that, we jump 16 months ahead. Clementine and Krista are seen at a campfire trying to cook something, with Clementine asking Krista to talk to her. Krista mentions that Clementine needs to learn how to cook and take care of herself, though after 16 months you would think that this would be something she would have taught Clementine already. Krista also mentions a place called Wellington, which is where they're headed. Krista leaves to go get more firewood while Clementine tries to make the fire bigger, but soon Clementine hears something and when she goes to see what it is, it's bandits attacking Krista. She tries to tell them that she's alone, but the bandits don't believe her and ask where the rest of her group is. Clementine either distracts the bandits or they hear her making a run for it, which leads to a chase. During the chase, one of the bandits gets killed by a zombie, and Clementine ends up falling into the river. Clementine wakes up the next day Riverside, alone, and starts to look around. She eventually comes across a dog named Sam in an abandoned campsite where she looks for food. She finds a can of beans and a knife to open it with, but when she starts eating, the dog wants some too, and where this leads is Clementine gets bit by the dog and has to kill it in self-defense. Injured and slowly losing energy, Clementine finds herself surrounded by zombies, and one of them attempts to run after her. The zombie almost manages to kill Clementine, but she's saved in the nick of time by these two other survivors, and after carrying her out of danger, they introduce themselves to Clem. They are Pete and Luke. Things seem okay until Luke notices her bite and he drops her out of panic. They think she was bitten by a zombie, but Clementine tries to tell them that the dog she encountered earlier is what bit her. They reluctantly agree to take her back to their group to have their doctor look at her, but then Clementine passes out. When Clementine wakes up, she finds a group of people discussing what to do with her, suspecting that she might be working for someone named Carver. She tries to explain herself but almost gets shot by Nick, Pete's nephew, and supposedly Luke's best friend. The doctor named Carlos examines the bites, but is unable to tell whether or not it's a dog bite. So the group agrees to lock her in a shed and see if she turns. This guy's supposed to be a doctor and he can't even tell the difference between a dog bite and a human bite? Listen guys, I know we just met, but I already cannot stand each and every single one of you. 
Except for Pete, who seems to be the only sensible and likable character in this group. Anyway, Clementine manages to find her way out of the shed and sneaks into the cabin to gather supplies to treat her injury. This includes having to talk to the doctor's daughter, Sarah, who is older than Clementine but seemingly more childlike than her. Clementine can choose whether or not to be friends with her, and afterwards she gives Clem some hydrogen peroxide. After gathering everything she needs, Clementine makes her way back to the set to patch herself up and... Ah! Ah! Oh, God. Ah! Ah! Jesus. I didn't think they were actually going to show her stitching herself up, but not only do they show it, they actually make you do it yourself. Jesus. Anyway, just as soon as Clementine finishes his thing patching herself up, a zombie breaks into the shed. How convenient. Clementine kills it, and the group rushes in to see what the commotion is all about. Of course, they find the stuff she took to treat herself, and the doctor decides to bring her inside to take another look at her. He confirms that if she was bitten by a zombie, then she would already have a fever, which makes the whole lock her in the shed overnight and see what happens plan a little bit excessive. Luke gives the poor girl some food finally, and the two have a bit of a chat. She tells him about her experiences from season 1 and about B, essentially telling Luke things that we already know. The next morning, Clem, Pete, and Nick go out hunting, but when they arrive at the river, they find a bunch of dead bodies everywhere. They decide to investigate, and Clementine finds her backpack along with one of the bandits who attacked Krista. After that, however, Pete gets bit as him and Nick get surrounded by zombies. Clementine chooses to either go with Nick or save Pete, and this choice actually does change how the next episode starts. The preview for the next episode shows us of things to come, but ends with a shot of Clementine saying, I thought you were dead. Who could this person be? That's for us to find out in the next episode. So this isn't too bad of a start for the season, actually. While not as good as the start of season 1, I think it does a good job of balancing out between parts of the game where you pick dialogue options during cutscenes, parts where you walk around and do things to progress the plot, often called hubs, and quick time events. The hubs don't offer as much to do in season 1 with maybe the exception of the campsite, but they're good enough in my opinion. I can't say for the same for the characters though, however. I already mentioned how I didn't like any of them besides Pete, but Luke's okay too, if a little bland. Personally, I would have preferred if Crystal and Umid lasted a little longer. Umid's death is one of the stupidest scenes in the game. It's bad enough that he dies as fast as he does when he isn't even a determined character in Season 1, but the way it happens too... I get that the sound of the door closing might startle the girl who holds up Clementine and thus reacts to it by firing a shot behind her, but why would Omid get distracted by this? I think the scene would have been better if they had taken out the part where Omid gets distracted by the door. This your daddy? What a bozo. See, this would have been, well, still suck, but at least it wouldn't be as stupid. Another problem that actually affects the season as a whole is the 16 month time skip. I get that the developers wanted to get closer to the comics and timeline and that 16 months is a long period of time where a lot of boring shit and other things that wouldn't be very interesting to see happens, but that's also a lot of character development that we don't get to see. One thing that I'm going to mention a lot in these videos is just how out of character Clementine can potentially act in this game. What causes Clementine to go from being the sweet, positive, innocent little girl that she is in Season 1 to being the jaded, depressed, potentially edgy bitch that she can behave like in Season 2? We're never shown through flashbacks, nor are we even told. It's just, 16 months have passed, Clementine is different now. But it's not just Clementine who suffers from the time skip. Krista is visibly pregnant at the start of the season, but after the 16 month time skip, there's no baby with her and Clementine. So what happened? Did the baby die? Was it a miscarriage? Was the baby taken from them? Once again, we're neither told or shown what happened. It's not all bad though. I mentioned the hubs before and I think the one at the campsite is the best one in this episode. In fact, the hub at the campground is one of my favorite parts in the entire game. I think Season 2, as it is, could have been better if it had more moments like this, where Clementine has to learn to fend for herself and become more independent, you know, provided they don't go overboard with the idea. Like I said before, one of my problems with Season 2 is how out of character Clementine can act at times. But for Episode 1, I think it's okay for the most part. 
She's quite capable of taking care of herself or someone her age, but ultimately she still needs to rely on adults to stay alive since she is, after all, just a little girl. When she kills Sam in self-defense, even if you choose to walk away from him instead of mercy killing him, Clementine isn't happy about it. She doesn't take pleasure in Sam's death, which is completely different from how she can act in later episodes. Some of her dialogue options are mean, and I understand that it wouldn't be much of a game if she could only act one way, and she wouldn't exactly have a positive attitude all the time, given the situation she's put in. But it seems like what she says might be a little too mean for her at times. I can be anywhere I want. Go away and don't tell anyone or else. Get it? I... Yeah, okay. I mean... She can even go as far as to outright blackmail Alvin into getting him to help her. Oh. It would be bad if she knew you were talking to me. Damn right it would be. I don't want to have to tell her. Motherfucker. Hey, language. You little... Getting yourself up in my business. I just need help. And you don't need any trouble. Do it, or I'll tell her. You're a real piece of work. Still, even with that, considering how bad things would get in later episodes, I think I can cut her mean options in this episode a little bit of slack. Well, screw you guys! Another part of the episode I liked is where you have to sneak around the cabin in order to gather supplies. Although I would have liked it more if there was more to it. During this part of the game, you cannot fail or get caught. At all. You don't have to sneak around anybody or avoid being seen. You can eavesdrop on the conversation that the group is having in the kitchen, and if you stay for too long, the size of the screen turns red, but if you don't back out, Nick might notice something, but Clementine still closes the door and goes unnoticed anyway. When you get the needle in the bathroom and are ready to leave, you have to hide from Rebecca before she comes in, but if you don't pick a hiding spot, she simply never enters the bathroom to begin with. I get that Telltale wants these games to be easy to play and that includes having as little room for player failure as possible, but I still think that having more parts or ways that the player can fail would make the game feel more like a game and ultimately benefit it as a whole. For the record, I am not one of these kind of people who thinks that well, Telltale games aren't games. I know what kind of games these are and how they have a minimalistic approach towards gameplay. I just think that these games would benefit from being more video game-like by having more possible ways of the players to fail. Just wanted to clear that up. The scene where Clementine stitches herself up is really painful to watch, but in a good way. The first time I saw it, I wondered how it was going to be handled. Like I said before, I was surprised to see that not only do they show you the process, but they actually make you do it yourself. Every. Single. Step. But it also kind of breaks my suspension of disbelief. I find it really hard to believe that an 11-year-old girl can stitch herself up, considering how painful it is, especially after pouring hydrogen peroxide on the wound. Well, if there's anything else for me to talk about in this episode, it's the scene where Clementine talks to Luke about her past. This is one area that really shows how lacking in character development Season 2 really is. Clementine tells Luke all about her, but we don't learn anything about Luke. It makes the scene feel off, and it would have made more sense if this was an exchange of information, rather than having Clementine do practically all the talking. And the information Clementine gives can come off as redundant to people who have already played Season 1. The last thing I want to talk about with regards to this episode is the ending choice. At the end of the episode, Pete gets bit and him and Nick are surrounded by zombies. Clementine can then either choose to save Pete or run to Nick. What I like about this choice is that it actually changes how the next episode starts. Something else you're going to hear me complain about throughout these videos is how your choices don't matter in this game. And this complaint comes up as soon as the first episode. Starting with The Walking Dead, every choice of each Telltale game has at least 5 major choices to make that have the statistics of how many people picked them displayed at the end of the episode. In this episode, however, 4 of these major choices don't have any effect on anything. Not Clementine, not how the story develops, nothing. The ending choice, however, does change how the next episode starts, and I think that alone makes at least the final chapter of this episode worth replaying, to see how the next episode starts depending on your choice. I'll talk about what these changes are in the next video. Well, that was episode 1, and honestly, it really wasn't all that bad. Not really good, especially compared to season 1, but this is probably the best episode season 2 has to offer, because it's all downhill from here. 
We'll get a taste of how bad things will get when I look at episode 2, A House Divided. See you guys in the next video. In the water, oh.